Hello everyone, my name is Brad and welcome to Mediocre Models. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I would paint uh, German Giebersjägers uh, using contrast paints. Um, here I have a model I already have painted up. There's my test model just to see how it'd come out. Um, Warlord does do actual um, Giebersjägers models which are metal but um, I didn't have any of those so I decided to make my own. I just used um, the body and arms of a Waffen SS um, soldier, and I just cut off the little um, like parts on the side here and on his back, and then glued one of the British commando backpacks on just to give him that backpack. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be using this model. Uh, he's undercoated in Corex White, and for contrast paints, I have. Skeleton Horde, uh, my German uniform mixture, which is two parts Creed camo to one part Basilicatum Grey, then my British uniform mixture, which is two parts Skeleton Horde to one part Wildwood, uh, Militarum Green, Snakebite Leather, Creed camo, Gorgrantifer, Wildwood, Black Templar, and Gilman Flesh for the contrast paints. Uh, then I have Lead Belcher for any metallic areas, and then Non Oil and Agrax Earthshade for shades at the end. Uh, so I'll get set up for the first paint and then we can begin. Uh, the first colour I'll be using will be Skeleton Horde. Uh, and I'll use this to paint in his jacket. Uh, this is just to give him that sort of uh, cream coloured look to their jacket. And most of the pictures I've seen they either have a jacket that looks like this, you can get some which are sort of uh, like a darker green or maybe a grey or something like that. Uh, but I like the uh, sort of cream colour look to it. Uh, so to go all over his jacket, uh, any of the rope or anything like that, uh, as well as his red bag. Uh, so I'll continue on and I'll paint him and get him done, and then once that's all dry we can move on to the next colour. Now that the skeleton hoard is all dry, the next colour I'll move on to will be my German uniform mixture. Uh, and I'll use this to paint in his field cap, uh, as well as his pants. So I'll paint this in and let that dry, and then we can move on to the next colour. While the German uniform mixture is still drying a little bit, the next colour I'll move on to will be my British uniform mixture. Uh, and I'll use this to paint in his backpack. Putting it on, try and avoid getting it onto any of the rope or anything like that. Let's just go. All over his backpack. I'll continue on and let that dry. Then we can move on to the next colour. Uh, the next colour I'll move on to now will be Militarum Green. Uh, and I'll use this to paint in the uh, sort of the top of his boots where his socks poke out. Uh, if you don't want to paint this in Militarum Green, you could also use um, Skeleton Nord and paint them in that as well. Uh, but I just wanted to use this just to add a bit more colour and variation. I'll let that dry and then we can move on to the next colour. The next colour I'll move on to will be snakebite leather. And I'll use this to paint in any wooden areas on the weapons. So for the rifle it'll be main body of the rifle. Uh, as well as the uh, sort of the bottom of their water canteens. Continue and finish this off, and then once that's dry, we can move on to the next colour. Um, 
the next color I'll move on to now will be Creed Camo. Uh, and I'll use this to paint in any of the uh, sort of the top of the canteen or any of the sort of cooking equipment or anything like that they have. Uh, if you're going to paint these up for sort of uh, North Africa or perhaps Italy, the campaign in Italy or anything like that, um, if you want you could use Skeleton Horde to give them uh, sort of like the desert um, sort of camo colour on them. Uh, you could use Skeleton Horde but um, you'll have a lot of the same colour there. Another colour you could also use would be Agaros Dunes and that'll give it a much darker yellow and make it stand out just a little bit more if you wanted to do that. Uh, but that's it for the Creed Camo. The next colour I'll move on to will be Gorgranta Fur. And I'll use this to paint in any of the leather straps on the weapons. Uh, as well as his boots. I'm putting this colour on especially when working with the weapon straps. Be careful when working near the um, actual uniform. But if you do get it on, it's no big problems. You can just go through with the Corax White, fix it up, and then go through with the Skeleton Horde again. Uh, so I continue on and finish these boots off, and then we can move on to the next colour. Uh, the next colour I'll move on to now will be Wildwood. And I'll use this to paint in any of the handles for the entrenching tools, or if you have any with sort of pickaxes axes on them or anything like that. That's it for the wildwood. Uh, with the wildwood finished, the next colour I move on to will be Black Templar. And I will use this to paint in any of the sort of leather straps for his webbing, so his belt, and any of the ammo pouches at the front, as well as the uh, the leather straps that go out the front. Uh, once again, try and be very careful when putting this on. Uh, so I'll continue on and finish him off. Um, and then once I've finished with all the Black Templar, I'll do a bit of clean up on his skin with the Corax White, and then we can move on to the final contrast paint. Uh, now that I've let the Black Templar dry, I've gone through with the Corax White, fixed up his skin and a couple of other little areas. Uh, the final contrast paint I'll move on to will be Gilliman Flesh, and this will just be for all of his skin. Apply it simply straight on. Uh, if you want, and you're looking to maybe give them sort of a scenic base with, uh, with they're climbing up the mountain and it's all um, snowy in that, uh, instead of painting their hands Gilman flesh, you could also use either Basilicanum Grey or Black Templar, sort of just to give them like gloves. Or you could, you know, do some variation and. Give some gloves and give some skin. So that's it for the Gilman flesh. I'll let that dry and then we can move on to the metallics and then the washes. Uh, now with the Gilman flesh all dry, the next colour I'll move on to will be lead belcher. And I'll use this to paint in any metallic areas on the model. So it'll be any of the clips on his webbing, any belt buckles, uh, if they're wearing their caps it'll be the eagle on the front, and just any sort of metallic areas on the model, the clips on his backpack, I'll also paint in any metallic areas on the weapon as well. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll continue on, finish that off and let that dry, and then once that's dry we can move on to the final shades. Now with the lead belt to dry, the first shade I'll move on to will be Numb Oil. And I will put this all over all the metallic areas. So if you painted the weapons up like I have, it'll just be all the metal areas on the weapons. Otherwise, if not, then it'll just be all the other metallic areas on the model, so all these little clips. So I'll let that dry and then we can move on to the final shade. With the Numb Oil Dry, the next shade I'll move on to will be Agrax Earth Shade. And this will just be an all over wash. I'm putting it on, careful to avoid any major pooling or anything like that. And if you've painted the weapons up like I have, try and avoid any of the major metallic areas. Putting this shade on, it'll just help darken the overall colour of the model, help tie the colours in together, and it'll also give them that nice dirty war-torn look. So I'll let that sit, let him dry, and then we'll come back and take one final look at him. Uh, now that the Agrax Earthshade is basically all fully dry now, it's just a couple of parts in the deepest recesses that's still drying a little bit, and this is what he looks like. As you can see, the shades really helped bring all the colours together and sort of darken them up a little bit. Only thing left to do now is to put him a or finish off his base. So yeah, that's how I'd paint my um Keepers Jaegers. I might do probably just a single squad or so if I was gonna do this. So yeah, hope that helps you and I hope that gives you some ideas or something along the lines of that. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.